You're listening to the One Step Deeper Podcast with your host, Jimmy Moore and Brittany Davis. One Step Deeper Podcast.com. It's so weird. We recorded, what was it, two days ago, and now we're recording again. So it feels like I've done this already this week, but I get to do it again. <laughs> exactly. It feels a little weird. Well, this is our normal time, so this should not be the weird. Sunday would have been weird. So. <laughs> I think because of Sunday, like my brain thought that it was Tuesday. And so I've been ahead of schedule this week. And so today, even though it's our normal time, feels odd because of the yeah. thrown off on Sunday. Yeah, it's like around the holidays, whenever like everything is off, it's like you have no idea what day it is anymore. <laughs> no, just no idea. Yes, yes. So I had a nice conversation today with someone on the phone. Um, I like doing that. Like sometimes uh, someone will reach out in the DM and I'll be like, call me. And they're like, what? Wait, what? Who? What? And yes. we'll get on the phone and they're like, wow, like you're a real dude. Like you don't yeah. play this personality online. I'm like, no, I try to be authentic and real and like the real deal. This is, this is what you get. It's kind of hard to fake that this is not who I am. And then to right. try to who I am really am I, I don't I don't get the people that do that oh lots of pain lots of trauma lots of wanting things that we'll get into in a bit but uh I'm right there with you by the way I'm just like what you see is what you get really the only thing that I do different in my day-to-day -day life with my friends and my very close family and my husband that I don't do online is I show a lot more emotion um but I even show emotion online I don't I don't hide the fact that I'm an emotional being and that I have feelings and emotions. I oh. just try to come on and give the reactionary emotions to online. It's to the point that when I see what you post publicly, I see the hidden message in it because we're such good friends now. So if you haven't noticed, guys, today we're talking about in episode 60 of the One Step Deeper podcast, living authentically in an inauthentic world. And as soon as I mention this as a topic uh, to Miss Brittany, she's like, yes, let's get that one. Because there is so much fakery out there. So many people, like you said, dealing with traumas and not dealing with traumas <laughs> that's leading them to be inauthentic. And it's, it's, it's a shame. I wish we could all be who we really are, but we'll get into that here in just a moment. One step deeper podcast.com is the website. Go check us out. You guys, audio and video are located there. All the past 60 episodes. You can check us out there Sundays at 4 PM Eastern time over on YouTube. We do debut these, uh, just go look up the, uh, one step deeper. It's really easy to find one step deeper in a quote and you will find the show. We put it simulcast up pretty close to that same time of 4 p.m. Eastern on Sundays over on Instagram as well as on Facebook. Then on Monday, if you'd rather listen to us and not watch us, you got to watch though. The watch is the fun part. But if you would rather listen to us, we are a traditional podcast over on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, A-L-E-X-A, -E all of the great places. Uh, and, and hopefully they get the uh, situation uh, fixed with Spotify. As of the recording of this, Miss Stang here went on stories and like, anybody else having trouble with Spotify? I'm not the only one. Brittany Binky reached out. She's like, yeah, I'm logged out too. I'm like, All right, cool. It's not a me problem. That helps. That helps. Yes. The whole world stops when you can't log into Instagram. You can't get into Spotify. <laughs> it's so funny. We do rely on all these technologies so heavily that when they don't work, we kind of like our world kind of gets turned upside down a little bit. <laughs> it's all right. After this, if we're still having problems, we'll just turn the record player on because I got that too. I got, I got sources for music. You are a young millennial, but you do have a record player. Well, well done. Well done. Yeah. So uh, after that, then you can go and uh, leave us a review over on uh, Apple Podcasts. If you like what you hear, give us a star review. Give us a written review. We would just like to hear from you about what you like about the show. She is at becoming dot Brittany Lee over on Instagram. And I am living low carb man on Instagram. Reach out to us anytime. We don't bite. I promise. We are both a very authentic, real people. And you will learn that if you write to us. In fact, I'm going to challenge people this week. 
you've always held back from writing. You know you want to write us. Write us. Write us. Test it. Look, if I get 100 uh, DMs, I might send a few of them to Brittany. <laughs> but write us. We would love to hear from you. I'm personal. I know you're personal um, in talking to anybody. So please do that. Test it. Again, becoming Dr. Brittany Lee and living low carb, man. And yes, our book is still on the way. The One Step Deeper Journal, The Foundations. No new news about that, but it is coming soon. All right, Miss Brittany, we are here in an inauthentic world and authenticity kind of stands out like a sore thumb. What is up with this? Why, why are people so, I hate to say it bluntly, but they're fake. It, you know, my brain immediately goes to feeling for them, feeling for their trauma. So often what happens is we want acceptance we want love we want people to like us we want to fit in we want to be in some group that we deny ourselves who we really are so that we can feel those things yeah. and i think of people in my life myself like matter of fact let's let, i'm just gonna go into it okay you guys might see these little earrings dangling uh, on my ears i made those yesterday and it's it's it might not seem like a big deal to you but it's a big deal to me because my entire life i was told Brittany, you try too many things, like just pick one thing and stick with it. And so in order to please other people around me, I stopped because they told me I was a, a hobby hopper and I tried all these different things. And what they don't understand is just because I try something new doesn't mean that I never do what I did before again. You know, years ago, I tried to learn to paint, got pretty good at it. I was like, OK, cool. I'm good with that one. But just the other day I painted again. But I've people push that on me because I live authentically and kind of they see my authenticity as flutter they see it as oh you're just flipping here flipping there no I'm literally being who I am I like arts and crafts things and so making earrings yesterday lines up perfectly with who I am because I just choose to be who I am but for so long you know like school for example I've told this story on the podcast before that my dad was like but you're so good at school. Why would you go to cosmetology school? You should go to college. You, you have good grades. It doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you go to college? And so to appease him, I didn't live authentically within what I wanted. And I wanted to please him. And so I did what he wanted for me. And because I want to be accepted, I want to be loved. I want my dad to love me. And he didn't realize that he was doing anything wrong or bad in the moment by saying, hey, go to college. Um, but by him pushing that, I'd, I, I, denied myself authenticity of doing what I wanted to do and said, did what he wanted me to do. And it wasn't like he wasn't wanting you to be authentic. In his mind, the authentic Brittany was a scholarly Brittany because you were very good in your grades in school. So he was not wrong. And his rationale was, OK, you're at an age where maybe you don't fully understand the ramifications of these choices that you're making. You were much more intelligent than he gave you credit for. Uh, you were you were book smart, but he didn't think you were street smart. And so, uh, you know, I can see from from Mike's perspective, he was trying to say, hey, little little Barwick. We're, we're going to set you on the right path. And in his mind, college seemed to be that path. And look, I think it taught you the lesson of of stepping into your authenticity and no longer letting other people dictate what that is to you. Yes. And, and along this line, I mean, to talk about being authentic, you kind of have to know what that means. Like what what is authenticity? What does it mean to be living an authentic life? And for me, it means sticking to your core values. Well, here's the problem. If you don't know what the hell your core values are, then how can you even begin to be authentic and live within that? Yes. Um, and, and in order to find your core values, here we go. We are one step deeper in early. In order to find your core values, you have to ask yourself those questions. Why do I believe this? Where did this belief come from? Is this me and my belief or is this a reflection of those around me so that I fit in with them? And so you have to dig deeper and deeper and deeper until you get to the bottom line. And maybe that means some of what you thought were your core values change. My three core values are kindness, respect and compassion for all humans, including self. The including self part, I'm still working on that one. But I like to give kindness, respect and compassion. And that 
that really is my core values. And so anything that I choose in my life is going to be acting out of those core values. That means I'm living authentically. And so kindness to self equaled, I'm going to try some, making some damn earrings because I want to, and I want to be kind to myself and, and have fun. Um, and, you know, Jimmy, I know you have core values too. And I don't know if you like off the top of your head could go with three of them, but. but very similar to yours. I mean, I, I would start with love because I love people. Yeah. Um, kindness and compassion. Those are my three. This yeah. is this is why you and I get along. We're very, very similar in our core values. Even though we disagree on a lot of things, we agree heartily on these core value things. That's See, there's the secret sauce to Jimmy and Brittany being friends. Yes, exactly. Our core values match up and align. And it's so funny that yours is love and mine would be respect. Oh, my goodness. I know I've, I've referenced this before, but there's a book called Love and Respect um, Within Relationships. And it's the, the book, the original book is talking about marriage, but you can apply it to any friendship or any relationship in your life. And it's funny because typically they say men desire respect. And give love when they feel respected and women give love or women give respect when they feel loved and for us it's kind of it's kind of vice versa so are you saying in this friendship you're the guy and i'm the girl <laughs> you said it not me but uh, <laughs> but i love that both of us can be so authentic with you know yeah. within this relationship and when we have conversations that we're always acting out of those core things but it wasn't always that way it's the core of of our strong bond is yeah. our willingness to go where no conversations go before for a lot of people uh like that star trek reference so um yeah like we go in and like, I think you talked about this last week, we go in some very difficult subjects um, a lot of times, and they're not always super comfortable, but we yeah. always come out of those conversations of, okay, we were real with one another, not ugly. Look, being real doesn't mean being ugly, doesn't mean, well, this is just who I am. I know you hate that anyway. I would never say, well, this is who I am, Brittany, deal with right. it. Oh, I would not last long, guys. She would she would find a way to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and kick my ass for that one. <laughs> but oh. it's it's that mutualness there. Um that with those core values, they ground you. And yeah. be, being real means knowing that you can literally say anything to that other person and they won't get upset by it. They might feel something, but they know that you have their best interests in mind. And that changes everything. Like there's not there's not many people you can say something that is counter to what they believe and they don't viciously attack you for that. And that's why I think it's important within relationships to be sure that the other person knows what your core values are. So if you're acting outside of your core values, something's clearly wrong. Um, I can't really think of an instance where I haven't acted out of my core values. Now I may have gotten a little upset or heated, but you know my core values. And so if we are in some kind of disagreement or while men are in some kind of something or me and the girl, whatever, whoever it is that I'm close with, they know at my core that I desire kindness, respect, and compassion. And I give kindness, respect, and compassion. And so maybe to filter and see it through my eyes. Um, and same for me, you know, I know that Jimmy desires love, compassion, and kindness. And so I give that. It's so important when we're talking about authenticity to operate from your core beliefs and then taking it into that, a world of inauthentic people. I mean, let's be, you know, like I said at the beginning, people operate not in their authentic self because they are afraid of not being loved, not being liked, not being desired, not having a circle, not having a friend, except what happens is when you're living inauthentically, you don't attract people who are authentic. No. And so I think about mine and Jimmy's relationship when we very first started, it was odd, but I had gotten to the place where I'm like, I'm going to be my damn self. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be who I am. And so Jimmy met me later in life. So he didn't, I mean, he's watched me evolve from the beginning of our relationship to now. Um, but I just was open and authentic from day one and operated within my core values. 
And that was probably, that probably gave him permission to be like, well, shit, I'm going to be myself too. Not that Jimmy's ever been anything other than himself. Can, can I tell you what it did for me? I don't think I've ever said this out loud. When life got tough for me with circumstances in my life and dealing with my childhood trauma and revelations that came out suddenly out of nowhere two and a half years ago, and then um, the, the end of my relationship with my wife and just so many things kind of was going crazy. First person I thought of was Brittany. Okay. And I called you and I was like, I, I need somebody to talk to. And you're like, hey, I got you. Let's go. I got kindness and compassion and respect in my heart for you. So let's do this. And that's when, you know, I credit you often that I, and, and you almost made you cry at my birthday party when I said this, that I made it through that time because of you. And she said, don't do this. Don't do this. I don't want this. Yeah. I was like, don't make me cry up here in front of all these people. <laughs> but you did guys. And so that built that bond, but it was because you were authentic because it's easy to open up to someone who shows themselves as authentic because part of the authenticity is, and we say this a lot with a lot of things, but it's vulnerability yeah. that allows that authenticity to shine through. And if you're not vulnerable, if you're not willing to put yourself at risk of, oh, what are they going to think about me? Yeah, none of that matters if you're living in your authentic self. And Brittany has never shied away from being exactly who she is and having very very strong opinions about things that I kind of had to gulp and and, <laughs> and I still love and adore her to death, but I'm like, right. so let's talk about that a little more, Miss Miss Authentic. So. <laughs> well, it, I wanted to tell a story. It's in the book and you can dive in a little bit more. It's one of the later days of the 40 days. I talk about my mother-in-law, Mary, and Mary means the absolute world to me. However, the beginning of our relationship was trash we did not get along not even a little bit I mean like she threatened to kick my ass like that kind of not get along guys it was bad um fast forward a few years later she had left her husband and that was very important to her change because even though I had always saw Mary as a hardened person I realized she wasn't hardened she was living a life that wasn't her. She was being inauthentic within herself. She wasn't honoring herself. And what made her so hostile with me and me hostile with her was she knew I wasn't living authentically. She knew I was just doing things and saying things to make her happy. Yes. And I couldn't tell you exactly the psychology why. Maybe it was just because she's like, no. Nobody's going to change to try to make me happy because I constantly have to change myself to make other people happy. So I don't want that. And there was just contention there. So Mary and I now have a wonderful relationship, an incredible relationship. But it literally took me becoming a little bit more like her and deciding I don't give a flying fuck what people think about me. I don't care. And I'm going to be who I am and honor my own choices, decisions and my own core values, regardless of what people think of me. And I had to learn to come become a little bit more like Mary. And now we're super close. And the same thing happened with my dad. When I began to step into my authentic self, the person that I was afraid to be because I was afraid I wouldn't be loved. Chant, like it's turned out that I have closer relationships with everybody in my life than I've ever had before because they now respect you for being who you are even though in your mind oh i can't be those things because they'll think differently or less than of me if i'm not this vision of who they think i am and we've even talked about this before that everybody has a version of you in their mind and every one of those versions are different and so it makes you play this game of all right which version am i going to play today and so when you live authentically, people are attracted to authenticity. I think that's why I've stuck around so long in the space online. People see me as real. They see me as caring. They see my core values on full display all the time. You said they see me as caring and I only heard Karen. I'm like, yeah, Jimmy's a total Karen. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Jimmy's not a Karen because he lives authentically. And, I, and you know, we have had this 
theory that the Karens out in the world are just trying to please everybody all the damn time. And so they blow up at the random person because they just trying to please everybody all the time instead of honoring. I don't know. Karens are a phenomenon in themselves. Did you go keto and thought you had to give up wine? Well, let me introduce you to Dry Farm Wines. It is the world's first sugar-free alcohol that is lower than your typical wines. Organic made at local farms that do it the right way. Most of the wines that you buy are from three really big companies loaded with additives and preservatives, so many dozens of those kinds of things. You don't want all that junk in your wine. So go to dryfarmwines.com slash Jimmy and they will ship you these wines. And just because you listen to this podcast, Dry Farm Wines is going to give you a bottle of in your first order for just one cent. Go to dryfarmwines.com slash Jimmy and uh, you will get your bottle of wine for just one singular penny. Go check them out. Dry Farm Wines, you guys. It's wine o'clock somewhere. Let's go get some wine. But I want to get back to the friendship thing. You know, I hear a lot of people talk to me about, I don't know how to find people who are authentic. Like I don't. And so I always have to pull out the Britney tough love and go okay if you can't find someone who's authentic in your life and you don't have that relationship the tough love question is are you being authentic yeah because chances are if you're not attracting authenticity it's because you're not putting it out there yes yes there is totally a tit for tat relationship with that I think that's how you and I found each other was like it was random, a story you put on your Instagram page that you tagged me and, and we and we started talking on the phone and everything. Yeah. But it became quickly apparent that there was a little more to both of us on both sides. And so, and, and look, I've been able since Brittany, Brittany's not my only authentic friend. I've got about seven others, ironically, all women. They're, they're, they're all ladies of varying ages and varying places in their life and uh, varying marriage status, like it's like it's funny. And guys, oh, let me speak up for the dudes for a moment. Guys, this is where we're derelict. We have to be more authentic. And look, I realize vulnerability, authenticity, you know, from a from a traditional male role perspective. Well, that's sissy, and that's uh, oh, you're not a tough guy if you're that way. Yes, yeah, screw all that. Uh, screw the patriarch in this in this instance yes. um, because I feel like we have lost so much of what comprises a man all under the guise of we have to be burly and emotionless and creatures and look I'm saying if you're one of those people I'm not saying you're bad I'm just saying watch how your life can be enhanced if you have authentic uh, authentic relationships if you live yourself authentically, if you cry when things are appropriate to cry, if you got a little girl, I'm sure wild men cries over your little girls sometimes. Maybe. No? So anyway, we show emotion. He shows emotions in his own way um, if he doesn't cry. So I just feel like we have lost that essence of authenticity as men. And so I'm challenging men Get back to it. Allow yourself to go there. I promise you it will enhance your relationships and it won't be it won't make you any less of a man than you are today. Agreed. And I and you know, I speak up in this area a lot. It's hard because I'm definitely like, yay, women, Woo-hoo, women power. You know, I'm I'm very much that way. But at the same time, I think about the men and what's happened is men have been told, shut it down. Yeah. Essentially, they're being told, don't be your authentic self. And what happens is you bury all of it and it just becomes this. You fall apart, you end up crumbling and they become angry and bitter. And it's so sad to watch that happen. But at the core of what's happening is they don't have their core values because they are told in order to be a man, your core values has to be has to be to provide has to be to work your ass off, has to be to shut it down and not feel your feelings and not cry. And like they're conditioned to this is how you must be as man. And if you aren't, then there's something wrong with you. And so 
no man is allowed really to live authentically because of all of these messages within an inauthentic world. To me, I think that's a travesty. And that goes back to parenting. That goes back to societal norms and society having expectations of that. But let's even go to the other side. There's a lot of women that don't live authentically either, even though I think they get more permission to be vulnerable. They get more permission to kind of be who they are. Oh, you're a little princess. Go be who you want to be. And like, what's going on there? Why would women reject the idea of authenticity? Um, because most of the time, authenticity and vulnerability go hand in hand. They're not the same thing. They are different, but they go hand in hand. And so women, and we're talking like big stuff here real quick. Women, at least, especially in my experience and any women that I know in my life, um, we're victims. We're, We're victims of men who haven't Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying not to be upset. Yeah, spit it out. I've been hurt by men and women have women on a mass basis have been hurt by men that they don't feel like they can be authentic because if they show that they're vulnerable, it's like you have to be like as women, we feel like we have to be strong in front of anybody, in front of man, in front of this, because if we show that they're weak, that we're weak. And I'm using air quotes here for the people who are listening because women are not fucking weak. And I don't think men are either, by the way. Um, But if we show weakness or what is viewed as weakness in society, then we can be attacked. And I've been attacked. I was a 12 year old who was attacked. Um, And that has made me fearful in everyday life and everyday situations of being my authentic self, of being totally just who I am in front of somebody because I am afraid not just that they won't accept me because I don't care if they accept me. I'm at that point, but I'm also afraid to not be a woman and just, I'm afraid to be the calm and I'm trying not to get upset. The calm dainty, because if I'm dainty, then I'm, I'm vulnerable. Yeah, and I respect all of that, and I can definitely see from your position uh, where that would be difficult. And and that brings up yet another thought from me is, does everyone deserve your authenticity? Because of all the things you just outlined, I think people in your life have to earn the right to be able to see your full authentic self. I've earned it in your life. You've earned it in my life. That's what makes us work. But we had to get through a little bit. And and let's be honest, you're not even always authentic with me fully. You still hold back. You mentioned it on last week's episode of, well, Wild Man gets the full board. Jimmy still gets kind of a lighter version. It's still authentic, but it's not the full authentic. And And so even in strong relationships, you're not always being fully authentic. But n- not everybody needs that. Not everybody deserves that. Wild man in your life deserves the full Monty authenticity that Brittany can offer. And I get a pretty good version of that, too. But some rando on the Internet telling you you're fat or whatever, they don't get nothing but a big old middle finger and goodbye and block delete. Yeah, that is that is going back to core values, by the way. That's showing kindness, respect and compassion to myself to delete, and block and go on with your life. Uh, so remember that that your core values aren't just about other people; they're about yourself too. Just wanted to throw that in there. But yeah, you you are so right that there are some people in this life that it doesn't mean you're not being your authentic self. It means you're protecting your authentic self by not showing or giving someone who doesn't deserve to see the full you. Yeah, and I know there are people in my life who I love deeply, and I have recently told them in so many words. I can't be myself around you, not because I care what you think, but because if I am, I will offend you at your core belief. Yes. Because we are so different. Our core beliefs sit somewhere totally different. And and that's, you know, we have problems as a society with all these different human beings who, number one, don't really know what their core belief is. I would just like to say that. Number two, their core, their core beliefs again, air quoting for the people listening, are aligned with what 
this person says or what this political party says or with what this culture says or with what this says they don't align it with themselves they don't ask themselves how they feel and they just attach themselves to oh they believe this i fit in this group and so i believe that these are their core values so i'm going to be that and they mold and change themselves into that and some people like you and me when we get into relationships and we can see from a mile away that's not their core beliefs. That's not them being authentic. We we can't we can't we can't be who we are. I, like I I can't be who I am. I it's trying to find the words here. You're cautious about being who you are fully because yeah. you know implications of that are not very pleasant. And so <laughs> again, yeah. back so. I guess it's like here on the podcast, when I'm talking with Jimmy, when I'm with my husband, I am dropping F this, F that. I'm, I'd say all the words, okay? And they don't bother me. I don't think anything of it. Yes, I cuss around my children. Call me bad mom. Do not care. But like, I, this is who I am. But when I go to my grandma's house, whose core values align with don't say that, I'm respectful, my core values, I'm respectful to her and her core values to not upset her. And maybe that's a little bit. And it's not that she doesn't deserve to see who I am. It's just I understand our values don't align in that way. <laughs> so I, I I respect her enough to not be that person. And it doesn't make you inauthentic to be that way around her. It makes, in my eyes, it makes you super authentic because you know your audience, you know where you are. Same in, if someone goes to church, you're not gonna sit there and go, F, D, G, D, I can do all that in church, why? Same. <laughs> there is an authenticity there of, okay, if I'm gonna be there, I have to play by their rules, so to speak. If you're gonna be in front of your grandma or other people of a more kind of religious sect and you know they hate, like my mom hates the F word, so. Yeah say it because her her uh, deceased uh, husband my stepdad used to use it very pejoratively all the time so it's a trigger for her well I can honor that I can love her enough to know okay I would say it in my authentic self but being authentic and loving her right to abstain from it in that moment with her I think it goes back to what we said being authentic means living in your core values. And so you were living in your core value of loving your mom. And so you were being authentic in your love for her. And it didn't change anything about you. It just meant when you're around her, you're going to present this way. And it doesn't mean that you're different. And people think authentic is, and, and this is your favorite little phrase to hate, it's just the way I am. And so people think, oh, if it's just the way I am, then they're being authentic when they bleh, you know in a bad situation and that's not at all the truth i i putting myself out there and and when i have people come over to my house for the first time or they meet me for the first time and i get in these conversations i have to assess the room i have to are they ready are they ready for full britney can they take full britney can they hear the tough love can they accept it and run with it? Or there, am I going to offend them? And all the while, while I'm asking these questions in myself and kind of assessing, I'm sticking with my core values. Am I being kind to self or kind to them? Am I being respectful to myself and being respectful to them? Am I being compassionate with myself and being compassionate with them in how and how I am and who I am? You know, so I think at its core, like you said, we are still being our authentic our authentic selves when we're around people and maybe we don't show this or we don't do that or we don't say this because we're still acting out of our core values to not be that in front of them but the biggest thing about authenticity is never say something that you yourself don't believe i have been told things by people that they knew I wanted to hear the thing they told me, Brittany. Ooh. And here's the bad part. I knew it. I could yeah. read right through it. I knew it was BS. I knew they were just telling me that to shut me up, to appease me, whatever their reason for doing it. And it's because I live authentically. I see when someone's being inauthentic. And it's so 
freaking obvious. So guys, don't ever, don't ever say or do things that you don't believe in. That's being, that's the epitome of inauthenticity. Yes, I agree. And on that note, please understand that your core values and what authentic looks like for you can change. It doesn't mean that you pick something when you're 21 and these are my core values at 21 and they're going to be exactly the same when I'm 61 because that's a joke. Oh. If you still believe the same things at 61 that you believed at 21, baby, you have not done personal development at all. Well, look, I think authenticity requires you to constantly be personally growing and developing. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of a prerequisite because otherwise if you don't grow, how are you being authentic? How are you showing a new part of yourself? Look, the, the man at 50 years old that I am now is a far different man than the man I was at 20. Uh, the girl at 29 turned in 30 this year uh, is far different than that girl just coming out of high school with all the trauma and everything and you know, first getting married and all the things that were happening for you at that point in your life. We grow, we evolve. And we get to a place where authenticity becomes more refined the yeah. older you get. And yeah, I like the idea of checking in with yourself. What are my core values? In fact, when I went to therapy, Brittany, uh, uh, and helped, uh, had help with a life coach, this was in August of 2019, the very first session, she said, what are your core values? Yeah. And I said something along the lines of, uh, helping people and, and loving them and uh, showing compassion to others. I forget what the third thing was. It wasn't kindness, but kindness has become the new mantra that I've added since then. And yeah, constantly evaluate those. Maybe when you come up with your word of the year at the beginning of the year, at that point, reevaluate what are my core values? And even like talk to friends, like I'll talk to you or whatever and say, all right, you've seen me. You're as much a part of my life as anybody. What do you think? What do you see? And then just see if it lines up with the things I wrote down. Yeah, I like that idea to to kind of check in with yourself. And that's something that I do often. Self-awareness of and, and it's really just an easy question. Am I living authentically? Am I being who I want to be or desire to be? You know, my word of the year for the year, speaking of, was becoming and. Jimmy kind of joked around when I was towards the end of last year because I was like, I don't know. I'm kind of playing around with a couple words. And he was like, you already have your word. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. I kind of already do have the word. And here I am. And it's March. And I I am becoming and I am attacking some things behind the scene um, that I will eventually talk about. Um, but I am becoming. And the more I face that stuff the more authentic I become, you know, yeah. I, and, and I love it. I love it. And it's tough and it's hard stuff. And it's what everybody here listens to the podcast, watches the podcast. You all are dealing with your own shit. I know you are because we're all human beings and we're all dealing with shit right now. And just because you don't share every single bit of it doesn't mean that you're not being authentic. And it doesn't mean that I'm not, since I'm not personally sharing this yet, that I'm not being my authentic self. I am respecting and having kindness and compassion for myself right now to keep it to me until I make my way through it because I'm fumbling, right? Well, the authenticity is the fact that you're working on a part of yourself that you have not made public. How easy would it be for you to continue? And I know what it is, so I'll keep my mouth shut, but how easy would it be for you to continue to do the thing that you're now working on and nobody would know. You never talk about it. But behind the scenes, you would be inauthentic. I was going to say, and like, that's been the hardest part is I want to be and become this authentic version of me and what I've always seen myself as. And it was this one thing that I kept in the quiet. And so I, I've had to constantly check. All right. Am I not talking about it because I'm being not authentic or am I not talking about it because I'm being what what is it but I know that I, my core three people the people that I love and the people that listen to me and know everything like they know the people that are are 
authentic with me and I can be my full self with them, they know. And that's what's important right now. And I'm going to work on that until I get maybe not strong enough. I'm uh, vulnerable and that's not right. I can't really think of a word. Healed. You need to be healed to a point. That's it. Healed enough where I can share, where I can share that struggle. And it doesn't mean, and I've had to tell myself this through lots of tears. It doesn't mean that I'm lying to people. It doesn't mean that I'm not being authentic. It doesn't mean that I'm faking anything. It means that I am being hella vulnerable in my personal life with me, with Brittany, yelling things at the mirror at myself of the things that I believed for so long and breaking down. Guys, what I'm working on has been an issue in my life for 15 years. And that is hella hard to work on. Something that has been a part of you that you identified yourself with and you were attached to for 15 years and you're trying to break away from that. That takes some, that takes some major authenticity to be able to get to the point where you're ready to do that. A lot of people ask me, Jimmy, how do you get such good deep sleep? Well, there's a lot of things that I do, but one of the newest things that I recently added is this upgraded magnesium from a company called Upgraded Formulas. Go to their website, upgradedformulas.com, and you can learn all about this nano uh, technology that they use for this particular mineral of magnesium. Again, it's called Upgraded Magnesium. And it's got all the different forms of magnesium in it using the nanotechnology so it gets absorbed a lot better. Guys, I have seen my deep sleep improve by as much as 30 to 40% simply by adding in this product along with sunshine exposure, darkness in the room, cooler temperature, all of the things that I always have done. So again, upgradedformulas.com is the website. Go check them out. And as I told you the other day in a conversation, when you're working on things behind the scenes like you're doing now, it's just an extension of the personal development and growth you've been doing. So I, I've been trying to encourage your guys. You're already you've already done this work in all these other areas of your life. And so celebrate that you you rose victorious over all of them. You figured out who you are. You've been authentic. Now you're just applying those same principles to this new thing. And you are going to rise above all of this. You're going to be victorious. And you'll come on here and guy, go, guys, you're not going to believe. And I'm, I'm ready to be vulnerable and share with you. And it's going to help so many people uh, when you come out the other end of that. And, of course, I'm there all along the way. Wild Man's always there. Uh, Brittany Banky's always there. We got you, girl. We got you. I know. And I'm so grateful for all of you guys in this world that demands that we be this or we be that or tell us that, oh, you have to believe this. Or you have to do that in a world that is so full of people who are hurting so much so that they want other people to pretend that everything's fine so that they in that world. I am so grateful for the three of you that I can be exactly who I am falling apart behind the scenes. I don't even want to say I'm falling apart because I'm really not like I'm just working. I'm just working on it. You know, there is no falling apart. There's a, a couple of hard moments. Yes. I'm sorry. What were you saying? No, I was going to say she has very broken down moments where she's quiet. I know what's happening. And I'm like, yo, you OK? I don't want to talk right now. O OK, cool. I'm just making sure because I can tell something's wrong. But they have become moments, not hours. And moments, not days, and moments, right. not weeks, yes. which is what it was. And so it's growth for me that there are moments. And so in your life, if you're aiming to be authentic, but you have a moment of not being authentic because you're trying to be liked or, or loved or accepted or whatever it is, forgive yourself, give yourself grace and forgiveness and understanding and just keep being authentic and just keep moving forward. And here's a little secret, and especially for you being the perfectionist that you are. Authenticity is now not about perfection, kind of piggybacking on what you were just saying. People yeah. think, oh, if I'm authentic, if I ever say anything off course, I'm no longer authentic. And it's not it's not like having a, a piece of poop that gets into your drinking water and then it's tainted the whole water. That's a bad analogy while you're drinking. But <laughs> thank <that's>, you. <laughs> here, I'll, I'll drink the poop in the water. 
<coughs> there was poop in the water. <coughs> Woo! Okay. Yeah, but like, I feel like people, they make a bigger deal out of this than they need to. Just, just live. <coughs> I really did choke. <coughs> just live authentically in your, in your true self. And work on it. Just be it every day. Like, look, when we turn off these cameras, guys, and we're no longer on the air and choking on on live uh, podcasts like this, Brittany and I keep talking for like another hour, an hour and a half sometimes. What do we do? We're real. We're authentic with one another. Um, and it's really not much different than what we do here now, we talk about the things that are unspoken that, that she's already said that she's being authentic with herself by not sharing. There's been little things like that for me that I've said I've been through some things over the past few years. So I'm being authentic to myself. Um, and so you're always going to have those opportunities to express it. And it's when you're not in a public kind of space that whatever way you act there, that's your authenticity. Like everybody sees me on camera, I do a million videos a week with all the work that I do. But my authenticness is when I'm not on camera, when I'm talking one on one, when I talk to somebody on the phone like I did right before uh, we got on the air today. I was on the phone with somebody for a long time. We talked for a little while and it was great. And it was a nice like she was even taken aback at how authentic I was. She's like, well, I, I knew you were authentic. I could tell. But wow. Wow, like she was amazed because I guess it's just not prevalent enough. It's not. And but the more that people like you and I step into being authentic, the more it gives people around us to step into them being authentic. You know, um, Brittany has been a longtime friend of mine. We were friends in high school and we've been removed from high school for a few years now. And we kind of lost touch for a while. And then just randomly, we learned that we live like right next to each other. And we didn't hang out at first, even though we were like right here. And then one day we were just like, all right, we got to hang out. It's been forever. And we just sat on my couch for like hours, hours, just catching up. And I told her, wow. Wow, just sitting here being authentic with you and sharing you sharing with her literally everything. I wasn't holding anything back. She knew that she was sharing things with me. It was like a breath of fresh air, like just attracting someone that's just going to be authentic like that. It was it was such a beautiful moment to not conform, you know, like so so many times in our life, like we conform to being liked and accepted. And it just leads to such empty emptiness. And so after conversations, you're just like, what was even the point? What was the point in us going out? Or do, what was the point? Like after Brittany, when we have our conversations, or, and even after Jimmy, I feel so like revitalized. Like I feel alive that I just, I mean, and all I was doing was being who I was. And I wasn't pretending to be liked. Because here's another thing too. The more you are not your authentic self and you're just placating and being this person just so that you can be liked, who that person on the other side is liking isn't you. No. It's not you because you're not being you. And so your acceptance and whatever you're feeling, that acceptance that you're feeling is fake. It's just putting more fake out into the world. Now you have fake friendships. And because they don't know who the real you are because you're not sharing the real you. Sorry. So, guys, I hope you're getting what we're uh, you're picking up what we're laying down here today, because I, I feel like. We can all do better. And even Brittany and I can do better. And, and we do with each other. But like branching out, I was mentioning earlier, I have like about seven other people. Um, they're my tribe. You, all of you guys, girls, are my tribe. Uh, you're, it's literally, you're all girls. I've got one guy in my life. He's the guy that produces our, our podcast here, Hank. Uh, that Thanks, I can Hank. Talk to and, uh, yeah, hey, Hank. And, you know, we, we have bro talk. And I think he's pretty authentic with me and I'm back to him, but it's not the same as my girl tribe. It's so weird. Like you guys, you're more apt to be authentic than guys. And so I'm trying to find some guy friends that can be that super authentic. So if you're a guy and you happen to be watching or listening to One Step Deeper podcast, reach out to me if you uh, if you need a vulnerable male friend to help you deal with stuff. 
to be authentic with. I love it. Yeah, Jimmy's light years ahead of most males. And I hope that males who are in my life and around me begin to feel like they can be their authentic selves. I really hope that that happens. And same, you know, Jimmy, I hope that by Jimmy being authentic, um, that he gives people or give males permission to just, just be, just be themselves. So, yeah. Well, look, I do it in my own work. I always write from a vulnerable perspective on my posts on social media. So yeah, I'm always being that way publicly in posts. I do these walk and talks over the weekend where I share from my heart. Um, and, and I, I just, I couldn't imagine living any other way, Brittany, to be honest. I, I find such freedom in it. I find, I found the real Jimmy when I stopped pretending like I knew who he was. And when I started walking freely, thanks to you and a lot of your encouragement all along the way with some of the tough things I went through, you're like, Jimmy, just just find, not find yourself, but be who you are. Go step to who that amazing man that you are. You are an incredible man and just live authentically. And your prodding and, and a lot of internal work on myself got me there. So thank you for that. And my prodding. <laughs> well, and your example, I would say, because like you got pretty blunt about some things at times, and that's your style. That's your authenticity, especially as we got comfortable talking to one another. But mm -hmm. your questions of like, is that what you really believe? And that was like challenging my authenticity. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yes. Yeah. Are you are you sure? Like <laughs> to be authentic, you kind of want to believe because of a reason what's your reason and then you kind of made me really sit with that and i'm like uh uh damn it but i believe and so i got to step more into my authentic self and i still do that to this day i'm still like evaluating all the things as as authentic as you think you are whoever you are right now watching or listening you can always be even more authentic go one step deeper into your authenticity um, to put a nice bow on this podcast today. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, you know, uh, as you walk through the one step deeper journal, you will find and create that authentic person within yourself. I promise it will come out because we ask all the questions to get that authentic out of you. Yes. And just because we live in an inauthentic world doesn't mean that you have to participate in it. I think sometimes, especially guys, I'm going to go back to guys and hammer you. You don't just need the we watch sports together guys or we talk about babes guys. Like, come on, like there's more to life then. And I think we could do better for one another. And it's why I turn to women. I mean, I'm, I'm, I thank God for women. Because I, I have some wonderful women in my life, not the least of which is this beautiful lady here, but lots of women that have let me be who I am authentically without shame, without judging me. Out of context, every, every relationship, authenticity can seem that you should judge them for the things that they say, but uh, in context of a solid relationship, that you've built that trust and care and love and kindness and, and compassion as I are my core values. It's very natural. And I don't even hesitate. Don't even hesitate telling you or any of my girl tribe, anything. Girl tribe. I love it. I love it so much. And I'm glad that uh, through you being authentic, you've, <laughs> you've attracted other people that are the same way. I love that. Yes, yes. So guys, here in episode 60, living authentically in an inauthentic world, it's hard. We know. We've lived it. We're there. People are going to continue to be shallow and inauthentic. That doesn't mean you need to participate. You can rise above. And look, you're going to stand out. You're going to have people go, whoa, whoa, something's different about you. I don't see this from other people. And that's when you can kind of say, hey, look, it's authenticity and it's going to change your life. Miss Brittany, take us home. 
All right, guys, one step deeper podcast.com is the website. All the past episodes are there. You can find them all there. Sundays, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on YouTube. First place you can find the podcast in video format. Um, it also goes up on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I like to put up the tidbit, the 15 minute tidbit on my page, the tidbit and the full episodes are up on Jimmy's page. That's on Instagram. You can find us both there. I am becoming dot Brittany Lee and Jimmy is living low carb man. That's where you can find all of that. We are typical regular audio podcasts. If that's your thing and you want to listen to us and not look at our gorgeous faces, uh, you can find us on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, A-L-E-X-A. And also, if you're over on Apple, you happen to be listening to us there. Leave us a review. We love hearing from you guys. And I'm pretty sure over on Spotify, you can leave us some stars. So leave us some stars if you're over on on Spotify. Um, And as always. If they don't lock you out. (laughs) Yeah, if they don't lock you out. Exactly, right? And as always, we love hearing from you guys um, in review form, of course. But message us really our dms are always open to listen to you guys anything that you want to discuss or talk about anything you want us to talk about on the podcast hey i'm open just send me a dm over on instagram and uh thank y'all for always listening and being here i love and love all of you thank you yes yes and god bless the usa <laughs> you said like, you did like a little you know, an ending speech and, it's, and god bless them <laughs> <laughs> all right so the one step deeper journal the foundations we keep teasing you with it i promise it is very imminent so keep sticking around go follow both of us on social media i assure you when it's out Brittany and i won't shut up about it so you will know when the time comes so thank you so much for watching this week you guys and we'll see you again next week bye guys bye one step deeper podcast.com Have you experienced the dreaded keto flu? Did you know that most of these symptoms are actually due to your body dumping excess electrolytes? This is where Element comes in. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt with no sugar. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following a keto, low carb, or paleo diet. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. With none of the junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. Everyone needs electrolytes, especially those on low-carb diets, or if you practice intermittent or extended fasting, if you're physically active, or sweat a lot. Add Element today and see how much better you feel and perform. Use the URL drinklmnt.com slash jimmy.